nice hair, huh? So I'm triggering myself by talking about this shit. But the, the, to me now, it's, it's like it's okay if I know and understand that that's what's happening to me. I'm like, oh, thank God I understand that this is not just like, I don't know. Because I've had explanations for it for a long time. Like, it's my PTSD and this and that. And I do think it's a lot of comorbidities, they call it. Like, there's a lot of different angles that this is coming from. But I, I just feel like I wanted to talk about the church again. The church. The church. When the church, when a codependent becomes involved in a church in a, in a quite virgin way. Like, I didn't have any spiritual training or biblical training. Although my mother's like, you went to church when you were little, little. Dude, I was trying to survive. Okay, I, I wasn't listening to the gospel message. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't catch the gospel when I was four at Sunday school. I, I'm sorry. But years went by and I didn't go to church. So sorry I didn't catch that gospel message in between tricks that I had to turn in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry, Mom. I didn't catch it. But anyway, look, what I did catch was when I went to, uh, I wanted to have a relationship with my parents. So they were starting to go to church. So I thought, well, I'll just go to church too. And then I met these nice people, and they made it their mission to get me saved. And they did it inside of a month. I mean, they just loved on me, and they loved on me, and they told me, told me, told me. And I didn't even know what the gospel meant. I didn't even understand what the gospel was, but I went forward at a revival meeting because they told me to. Like, if you think this now and you believe this now, come, come forward. And I was like, yeah! And I did it. <laughs> I was like, I ran forward. I was like, yay. And then I thought, well, neato. God loves me so much, he doesn't care what these other people think about me, that he did this. That he did this for me. And, he, and that's just, that's the message I got. Man, I was on fire. I was like, yay, I feel great. Oh, let me tell you something, man. The parents were, they acted like they were pleased. But secretly, I don't think they were. Because then it just started, oh, okay, and I gotta go to Bible study. And, I gotta, and slowly the gospel message turned into saved by grace to yeah you were saved by grace but now you got to toe the line and if you don't well you're still saved but you're grieving the holy spirit oh my god god's crying all the time because you're such a sinner i mean oh my god can you imagine what that does to a codependent <gasps> i can't live up to his expectations there's no possible way and on and on it went I can't tell you how many times I flung myself on the altar, begging God's forgiveness, and my mother told me, you better quit living like that. Like, whatever way. She doesn't even know what I'm up there for. Like, she has no idea what the... What, what, because God's not going to let you run around touting the name of Jesus and flaunting sin everywhere. He'll kill you before you let, he lets that happen. Like, he will take you out. He'll save your soul, but he'll cut your physical life short if you do not start telling the line. I didn't even know what the line was. Like, I didn't, like, what? I didn't, all I was doing was being a pretty typical, normal person. I was doing hair. I got, got graduated hair school, started working as a hairdresser. I was going to Sunday church every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, and choir practice and Bible study. And I was like, what, what is it I'm doing so terribly wrong? You know what I'm, like, I, I still to this day don't know what I was doing that was so terrible. I just, uh, crying, not Feeling saved? How dare you? How dare you think there's something you can do to buy your salvation? Then they flip it on you like that. You're like, what? You just said, don't you, just, don't you worry about what we just said. There's grace. You're saved by grace and grace alone. There's nothing you can do. But you better stop that shit you're doing. Well, I don't even talk about schizophrenic making shit. They're telling you at the church. <laughs> I'm getting triggered. Getting triggered. not allowed to be a parent you know I was talking about you're not if you're codependent you can't you're not allowed to be a parent if the other parent is a narcissist and they are like oh they just usurp your authority and if you ask your children to do something or guide them in a certain way then you're controlling you're a control freak but your kids better listen to you you better figure out a way to make them listen without controlling them like what <laughs> okay I'm done I'm done Oh, and now, Mom, you're just you're the worst thing that ever happened, but you can raise my kid for three and a half years. Well, you know, behind the behind other doors, they're like, Mom, I'm trying to take my kid away from me. 
I'm sorry. I didn't pick her up. You, you, you left her. I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to make sure the state doesn't get her. I, I just want to make sure the government doesn't find out that you, you don't know what you're doing. I'm sorry. Did I, was that controlling? Uh, I can barely, I can't even control my eyebrows. How am I going to, how am I going to control anyone else? I'm not even trying. I'm just trying to prevent more shit being blamed on me. I'm just, just if that's controlling, like I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I just, I don't, just, I'm going to stop being blamed. That's all. Just stop blaming me for shit. Peace out. I'm trigger happy today. Tr 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 trigger happy. <laughs> Saggy. <laughs> oh, no.